Hey what is up guys welcome back to Grid Legends. This is going to be my review of the final DLC that we're ever going to get for Grid Legends at least at this time but it is looking like this will be forever the final chapter in this game. So this is the fourth DLC pack named Winter Bash. So like the name suggests this is essentially an end of season party. Essentially it's just a kind of muck around for all of the drivers and teams to basically just play around at the end of the season and just have some fun. And you kind of do get that feeling but in all honesty this DLC just really left me wanting more. But before we get into the main details of why I just wanted more from this DLC let's go into it and see if this is worth it in terms of the numbers for this DLC. So this DLC features eight new story missions. So essentially what these are are kind of little, you know, mission objectives and such. Um, they've been in the entirety of this game from the base game and all the other DLCs. We have five brand new sprint drift layouts. Now I do massively like these. They're more kind of tight and enclosed. They're all set, I believe, on the same layout though in Japan. Uh, but it does really feel like it's more kind of street based drifting, you know, downhill you know, tight enclosed spaces. It was, you know, pretty damn cool. Uh, so there's five new drift layouts. Um, there's 45 updated routes, uh, routes for like boosts and, and jumps and ramps and such. Um, so there's more variety in terms of those. I don't know if they're just for the DLC holders or if everybody gets those, but it is one of the highlighted features. And there's three new vehicles, that being the Bugatti, the Belide, Belide, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that one, the Dodge Viper drift car and another BMW which just kind of feels like a bit of a copy paste from the one that we had previously. So on top of that you also have your new sponsor objectives and all that good stuff, you know the typical stuff that comes with these DLCs. Apart from that there's nothing really else to it. So there was a massive patch released at the same time but I'm just going to focus purely what's on this DLC. And in all honesty, even in terms of the numbers, this just felt like a bit of a last minute push out the door and that's it. You know, we're kind of wiping our hands clean of Grid Legends kind of thing. And it's a massive shame. In all honesty, Grid Legends was kind of my go-to arcade um, racer of 2022. And although the DLC could have been better, it just was never too terrible. I wasn't a massive fan of the Destruction Derby DLC. Uh, but apart from that, the rest of it was actually, you know, pretty good. DLC 2 and DLC 3, you know, felt like a bit of a return to form and they were much more focused. This one, however, just seems like a bit of a, let's just put it out there and this will be it for the game kind of DLC. It just felt very rushed and very lacking in terms of actual content within this DLC pack. In fact, I'd probably say the maximum you're going to get out of this is probably two to three hours tops before you've pretty much upgraded all the new cars, you've done all the sponsor objectives, and well, that's going to be that. But it's not always necessarily about the actual pure numbers and how long it's going to last you, but actually the content within it. So let's touch on the cars first. We're going to touch on this one, the Bugatti. Now this for me is a massive standout. This may just be the best car they've added post launch to this entire game. It's absolutely fantastic and it's a rarity. In fact, I may be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure this is the only kind of console racer that you can actually play this game, uh, play this car officially in. So, you know, it's a first for me and it's probably gonna be a first for a lot of other people. A very, very top-notch car. Then we have the Dodge Viper drift car. In all honesty, it's a good drift car. It probably isn't as slidey as I thought it were gonna be, but for me personally, I've got a bit of a soft spot for drift built Vipers. I've always thought they look absolutely awesome. For me, it's a shame it's not the previous kind of generation Viper um, before the one that we actually have. It's the kind of last gen Viper, um, but still, it's a cool drift car and something a bit different from kind of all the JDM drift machines that we have within this game. So a welcome addition, if you ask me. Then last off, we have the BMW. Now, for me, this is probably the weakest car that we've ever had added in. You know, apart from the Derby ones, I feel like they're their kind of own standalone thing. But apart from that, this is definitely a weak addition. And here's my reasoning for that. So the last DLC we got, we got the exact same car in its Group 5 model. So it had the full classic silhouette kit on it. It just looked absolutely awesome. Whilst it wasn't the fastest car in that category, 
it was just absolutely a blast to drive. This is essentially the same car, just kind of downgraded and made more basic touring car style. Um, in all honesty, it just feels like a bit of a copy-paste job, and there's no real reason for this to be added. Maybe if it was kind of in a pack that had more cars in it, but for this to be part of a free car pack just feels a little bit short change. So two out of the three cars are very, very good, but I guess you could say for the Viper it's very limited. The fact that you can't use it in normal race modes just, again, kind of limits it away to just the drift. And outside of maybe the career mode and, you know, the, uh, the extra missions that you get with this DLC, you're probably not going to use it too much, which just means that the Bugatti is really the only usable one. Up next, let's talk about the drift layout. So this is a bit of a big thing. Um, obviously, they're much, much different from what I'd say we have already in the game. Where for me, I found most of the drift layouts of Ingrid Legends far too open and easy. These are pretty much the opposite. So they do take place on the on the track that we all know in Japan. Um, but essentially, you're doing a bit of a you know, downhill drift. It's absolutely awesome. It's much more tight and on edge. And you can pretty much wipe out your points with the slightest tap of the wall. In all honesty... This is what Drift should have been all along. I absolutely do rate this one. I feel like it's massively uh, enjoyable. And to be honest, the last event that you do in terms of the story is a neon lit nighttime winter slide down the mountain. And it's just visually absolutely stunning. So these layouts are very, very good. Now let's talk about the, obviously, the story missions. Now... These are kind of the main beef of these DLCs, and I've never really been a fan of how they work. I feel like they're usually far too randomized. So, essentially, in terms of the cars that you get with a pack, usually uh, at least one of them's left out. I believe with DLC 2 and DLC 3, this was the case. And, you know, with here, because there's less cars, you do actually get to use them all. But again, it still have, has kind of random mixed in events, which is just a bit okay sort of thing. Then they're not terrible, but they're not necessarily the most kind of thought provoking thing. They feel like they were kind of just put in there to lengthen it out a bit. The ones with the new cars, however, are a huge bunch of fun. The downhill drifting in the Viper's great. And obviously the Bugatti is absolutely awesome. In fact, that was probably the standout event for me. Just going through the snow on a reversed Suzuka layout was just absolutely visually fantastic and just using that car just felt amazing and really really fresh so as i say it's probably a feels a bit more focused than the other dlcs in terms of you know actually making use of the cars within the pack i wouldn't say it's really the best one in my opinion the overall best one was the last one we got with dlc free where it just felt like it was a decent length and had a decent amount of kind of structure to it going through all the different times of raven west so you know it's not bad it doesn't lose track of itself too much like some of the other dlcs do um but in all honesty it's nothing really too too special in fact it felt very very short in comparison to all the others then last off, you have the new sponsors and such. And again, these feel just like a checklist. And in all honesty, they just are what they are. You know, there's nothing really new here. Um, it's just kind of drive a certain amount of miles or, you know, do a certain amount of jumps and, and do a certain amount of laps with hitting all boost gates and such. Just your typical run of the mill stuff. In all honesty, it just kind of pads it out a little bit longer. But in honesty, this is an okay DLC. Maybe it's worth the money. You know, let me know. Have you played this DLC? Did you enjoy it? But for me, it just felt a little bit kind of thrown out there to finish this game off. That's going to be it from me. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, guys. And as always, peace.